So the 25th Attorney General serving Kinetics, uh, William Tan. Welcome to the bridge. Let me start right in. So the first question is pretty um, general. Looking back, if you describe your work over the past four years in one word, which word would you like to choose to describe? Uh, I, I think I've spent the last three and a half years fighting. Yes on a number of different fronts. And every day is a fight, whether it's against the opioid and addiction crisis, yes. against climate change, um, against uh, what I think have, has been at times an unjust and unlawful mm. immigration system, you know, fighting for clean air, clean water, fighting against social media companies and um, the ways that social media harms kids. Mm -hmm. Every day is a fight. You choose the word fight. Fight, I think, is the best word to describe what an yeah. attorney general does every single day. Yeah. And, you know, my job is to fight for Connecticut's families. And, and so that's what I do. I really love the line that you use in your video. You said, help our family stronger. Yeah. How do you define stronger? The stronger is like in uh, economics, in finance, or in uh, which part the stronger? I'm, I'm really proud to have been born and raised here in Connecticut. I'm the son yeah. of Chinese immigrants. Um, they came to Connecticut. They met in Connecticut, my parents. Uh, my, my mother, um, her family is from Jiangsu originally. She was born in Taipei. Mm -hmm. And oh. my father's from Guangzhou. So, but they met in Bloomfield, Connecticut, <laughs> of all places. What and, a romance. Yeah. And, I, and I've always been very proud to be from Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And I think Connecticut is a great place to grow up. It's a great place to raise a family. Mm -hmm. And I think that Connecticut families are strong. But, but there's so much pressure on Connecticut families. There are so many forces that are squeezing us every single day. And that's true about families, not just in Connecticut, but in Massachusetts, New York, across the country. Yeah. Um, everything from the COVID pandemic, yes. to trying to educate your kids, to the cost of electricity and internet and utilities. Um, there's all this pressure, and I see it as my job to protect Connecticut families and to help them get stronger and to be stronger. Um, I have a 16-year-old, a 13-year-old, a 10-year-old, mm -hmm. uh, my parents, my 97-year-old uh, grandmother, Mm -hmm. um, here in Connecticut, and so our family is a big family, and yeah. um, um, we're very lucky. We're very fortunate to make Connecticut our home. Connecticut has not just welp welcomed my parents and grandparents here over 50 years ago, but it's given us everything. Yeah. And um, I think of all the ways that uh, we can try to help Connecticut families get stronger. Great. Um, you became the first elected Asian American Attorney General and Constitutional Officer in Connecticut's history <laughs> four years ago. So during this period, you must have seen too many cases related to current situation of Asian. For example, the disaggregation bill of Asian American data by ethnic group and also the Stop Asian Hate Movement since the pandemic. Yeah. So do you think the environment for Asians or more specifically for Chinese um, is gradually improving or is still very bleak? Yeah, no, I, I don't think it's ever been bleak. Mm -hmm. I think it's been very challenging. Chal yes. Look, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be sitting here mm -hmm. if Connecticut and, um, and our country, the United States of America, wasn't a great place for my family, true, my yeah. parents, my grandparents, and for me. Um, I've had every opportunity, and it's not just because my parents worked hard and made every sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's not just because I worked hard. It's because uh, of the place where I grew up. This can't happen anywhere else. And, and with all due respect to you know, all the other countries of the world and all the other communities of the world, I think my, sto my story only happens in America. And my story only happens here in, in Connecticut for me and, and my family. So um, I'm very optimistic about uh, the future for Asian Americans and Asian American and Pacific Islander families. Mm -hmm. It's still new for us. You know, yeah. for, for a while, it was a, a bit of a struggle to figure out how to describe my job in Chinese, right? <laughs> and, you know, I'm... I'm you know, Kangzhou uh, the Sifa Buzang, right? And and we had to figure out was that the right description, 
right? Uh, that's not, there's right? differences, yes. Differences, right? And, and even in Spanish, um, when I speak with Spanish language media uh, and journalists, there's a difference between the criminal prosecutor and the abrogado general, uh, right? The, the, the attorney general, uh -huh. and, and those are different roles. And so just in my job, we as a community, as Chinese Americans, as mm -hmm. Asian Americans are trying to find the right language, right? And we may not come from any of us the same democratic systems or traditions that we have here in this country. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of Asian Americans and Chinese Americans, it's a learning process. Mm -hmm. However, it has been entirely too slow, right? Mm. Chinese Americans have been here for a long time. You know, Young Wing came to Connecticut to study at Yale. Um, you know, over 150 years ago. Uh, Chinese Americans fought in the U.S. Civil War mm -hmm. from Connecticut yeah. on behalf of the Union. And, and Joseph Pierce, who had an, he had an anglicized name, was a Chinese American from Meriden, Connecticut, who fought in the U.S. Civil War mm -hmm. on behalf of the Union. Uh, the first Chinese American admitted to the bar as a lawyer that happened here in Connecticut. Oh. Yeah. And, and so um, until 2006, when I was first elected to the state legislature, I was the first Chinese American, first Asian American elected to any office mm -hmm. in, uh, at the state level in our state's history. And when I became elected attorney general, I was the first Chinese American elected yes. as attorney general in any state in the country. Now, there have been appointed attorneys general, I have to make that clear, mm -hmm. in Hawaii, who are Chinese American, uh -huh. but I was the first elected. Yeah. So I, I feel really good about our progress, but I also recognize that it's been entirely too slow. Um, yeah. And, and uh, it is unacceptable that it has taken so long um, for Asian Americans to get a political foothold and foundation in this country. and and. You may ask, why is that important? Mm -hmm. Well, it's important for moments like right now, yeah. when Asian Americans, including Chinese Americans, are unfortunately, it seems, routinely uh, attacked and assaulted because the anti-Asian or because the Asian hate incidents are mm -hmm. real and and they're horrific and they happen much more than they should. You need people like William Tong as an attorney general, Michelle Wu as a mayor, who are in a position to do something to advocate for our community, to help pass laws, to protect our community, yeah. to call attention to our community. I, I had a national convening yeah. of state attorneys general about anti-Asian hate. As, you know, some, I think it was in, in 2021, um, we did this in you know, the first quarter of 2021. Yeah. That doesn't happen if I'm not attorney general, yeah, right? Who else is going to do it? If if I wasn't in a position to say to my fellow AGs, we have to have a national convening and try mm -hmm. to figure out solutions uh, and promote uh, yeah. efforts to com to combat Asian hate. So I totally agree with you that the pace is a little bit too slow. Very because, slow. Yeah. Now after 150 years, we got the first one here and got first one in Boston. So. Now we are in the step of the first one. So we're waiting for the second one, the third one. And, and let me say that it hasn't been easy. Yes. Right? Uh, I'm sure that Michelle faces hate and racism against oh, her. Oh, that too. Of course. It happens with me too. Oh, why? Well, it happens on, on, on Twitter, on, on Facebook. Twitter. Okay. People say things all the time. They, you know, they yeah. accuse me, for example, of, of being a communist. They accuse me of being an agent for the Chinese Communist Party. I was born down the street in yeah. Hartford. You know, I'm, you know as, I'm as American as anyone here in this state. Yes. And that's offensive, it's wrong, it's yeah. hateful, but it happens. Just because of your face. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> um, and it, it, it um, encourages me and motivates me to do this job and to speak up for Asian Americans. Yeah. 
because if I don't, nobody else will. Yeah, you are the K opinion leader on any Lego issues, and everyone wants to know your comments. So usually, when looking at some issues, and do you have a few criteria or principles that you choose to base your judgments on that problem? You know. Uh, Usually for me, mm -hmm. um, it starts in a very personal place. Yes. And uh, we're asking the person. Yeah, personal level. I think that's true about most people in public service, mm -hmm. and I I think it's true about most issues. If if you think long and hard about, let's just say the environment, mm -hmm. women's rights, yeah. immigration, schools, right, public safety, law enforcement. All of those issues touch me in a personal way, mm -hmm. and and all those issues affect me and my family, and and so my my first question to myself when I see something pass over my desk or hit my email mm -hmm. is how does this affect Connecticut families, uh. right? And and I see that through my lens as a parent, as a son of Connecticut residents, mm -hmm. right? As a a parent, a husband. Um, I see it through the lens of my three children, mm -hmm. and uh, on most of these issues, that's that's the number one criteria. Yes. Does it affect Connecticut families like families, ours? Yes. And and how does it affect us? And usually, uh, if it's on my desk, mm -hmm. it's affecting us in a negative way, mm -hmm. um, and it's my job to push back and protect Connecticut families. So you got only one principle: families. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't say that's the only principle, uh -huh, uh -huh. but I would say that's where I start. And Connecticut families are, yeah. when, when I say families, I, I, families are, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh -huh. And, you know, it can be a family of five, it can be a family of one. Yeah. Right? How and about business families? Yeah, business families. <laughs> business and families. many families run businesses. Yeah. You know, and businesses are a big part of their family life. Yeah. And, and what's important to them. Yeah. To and be more specific, it's rich families. There are a lot of people that, and there are people who are struggling and, and, and they have businesses, but they're not doing well and yeah. they need my help. So there's all sorts of families, business families. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's just how I see the world. Yeah. release your first campaign promotional video on March 24th, so filming your morning before going to work. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Why do you choose that perspective and what message you want to deliver to the audience of this video? I, I think to help them understand um, uh. what my priorities are and, and how I start every single day. You know? Eating a bagel. <laughs> Eating a bagel. Uh, not good for the diet. Uh, I. I you know, I wake up every day um, with my family, and I focus on my family and yeah. making sure that my wife's all set before mm -hmm. she begins her work day, and that my kids are ready to go to school. Yes. And and we work together to support each other, and I think that's where it all starts. And yeah. it is the foundation, the basis upon which I think about the rest of my day. Right. Um, uh, in that video, I talk about the opioid and addiction crisis. Yeah. I talk about robocall scammers. Mm -hmm. I talk about high drug prices. All of that. Um, all the news titles. Yeah, coming. all of that. I, I, I take that on through the lens of, mm -hmm. of being a dad and, and being a husband. And um, as I say, um, my job is to get in the car and, <laughs> and work hard to make sure that Connecticut families uh, are strong and getting stronger. Great. So talking about social media, you are still fighting against TikTok. So you, the coalition that you are in, the bipartisan coalition, you're yeah. in, asks for the investigation to ByteDance. And what do you expect this investigation to find out? Or put it this way, do you think the investigation really can um, bring the teenagers to a right path and really can in affect them to be like, um, stop addicted to the social media? Do you think that's helpful? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we have a lot of work to do there. I, I'm not gonna say that it's going to be easy. Yeah. I, think, I think that parents, educators, 
um, elected leaders and kids mm -hmm. are starting to understand um, all the ways in which social media technology can be helpful and yes. all the ways in which it can be harmful. Yes. And I even had a conversation last night uh, with my 13 year old and I said, you know, we've got to talk about uh, responsible phone use and how often she just got a phone <laughs> and we waited for a long time uh -huh. uh, and tried to delay, delay, delay until she got one. And uh, it got to the point where, you know, it really wasn't possible given that, you know, you do school with your phone these days, you mm -hmm. stay in touch during a pandemic uh, with your friends through your phone. And, and, and so she's about to go to high school and we thought it was the right time. Mm -hmm. But we had to have a conversation about responsible use, not being on it too long, mm -hmm. right? The sort of content that she's looking at. So you allow her to download TikTok? Uh, I don't know if she has the app. I know that she sees TikTok videos uh -huh. all over um, all over the internet. I mean, I don't have TikTok, but I do think that there's a lot we can do uh -huh. uh, in terms of parental control, in terms of age limits, um, and, and stronger enforcement by TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Meta, yeah. of their rules and, and, and their guidelines and their user guidelines, and making sure that they do what's called content moderation. Yeah which is to find bad content and offending content, yeah. take it down. So sure, there's a lot we can do, um, but there's no doubt that it's a huge mountain to climb. You know, yes. it's gonna be very difficult. So you mentioned many achievements in your past career in this short video, and what is the thing you are most proud of? So the thing that you may say, I'm super glad I have done that in my career, in front of your families or friends, those kind of things. Well, I, I can tell you that a good day in my office is when mm -hmm. you feel like you've made an impact on somebody's life, like a direct impact. Yeah. And on a really good day, you feel like maybe you have helped save a life mm -hmm. and um, um, help somebody, for example, from um, falling deeper into addiction, for example, mm -hmm. or helping them find treatment and resources in to, to come back from addiction and mm -hmm. to get their lives back. Yeah. And you know, on, on this couch over here, I, I recently sat with a, a two moms here in Connecticut who between them lost three sons to the opioid and addiction oh. crisis. And the work that we've done fighting the mm -hmm. big pharmaceutical companies and distributors, the work that we've done fighting uh, Purdue Pharma and the Sackler family that and, and the money that will bring into Connecticut to fund treatment and prevention, it, it will never bring their sons back, but Actually uh, helps. it will help uh, stop more families from joining them yeah. in their grief and, and tragedy. And I think they would say it'll go a long way mm -hmm. um, to helping to stem and stop this crisis. So there's no milestone in your career that's all, all the steps by steps kind of thing? You no, know, because every day, every, every day, day something important, something uh, new, and it's it, yes. usually very significant, um, comes across my desk and, yes. and we have to confront it. And every case is important. Yeah. Great. Being a state representative for over 10 years and attorney general for four years, so what else do you think you can still provide to the community and improve that in your next term? Yeah, I think for me, it's um, continuing to use the tools of this office mm -hmm. to protect Connecticut families. Yes. What's becoming increasingly clear, clear to me mm -hmm. is that we've got to do a lot more as a state mm -hmm. and as a community and a society about youth mental health, mm -hmm. um, particularly uh, because of what we're seeing in social media and online yeah. and the advent of technology, um, I'm really concerned about how these social media and technology algorithms work mm -hmm. in, in pushing content um, to all of us and particularly young people. Uh, really concerned about how what some people refer to as the surveillance economy, mm -hmm. so the way in which Big companies collect data about all of us and then are constantly pushing messages and content and products. Mm -hmm. all, all of that affects young people and their mental health and their well-being and their financial well-being. And, and so 
for me, that's going to be a big priority. And in, in, if I have the privilege of continuing in this role, that'll be a big part of what we do. You never hesitate to hold your strongest opinion against many controversial issues or capital giants. So is it always your personal style to be a fighter with the straight punches? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know, as a politician, it's not that, that good for you personally. So do you choose? That? You know, uh, I think there's a stereotype uh -huh. that I don't believe at all that Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders uh, and Chinese Americans are not and fighters. <laughs> Plied and gentle, yeah. Uh, that we don't rock the boat mm -hmm. um, and, and that we're quiet and mm -hmm. meek. And, and when I hear those stereotypes, I don't know who they're talking about. Uh -huh. That's not how I was brought up. And I look at my parents. You know, they met here in Connecticut. They had nothing. Mm -hmm. They opened a Chinese restaurant. They worked extraordinarily hard, seven days a week, 15 hours a day. You know, killed themselves every single day for me and my sisters. And I, I never saw them as quiet or meek or mm -hmm. afraid of a fight. They stood up every single day and fought for us. And so those are the lessons that I learned from, from my family. And so it's always been... I've never been afraid of a fight because my family's never been afraid of a fight. And, mm -hmm. and so if, if we have to stand up to powerful interests, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. If we have to take them on and sue them, we'll do that. If we have to hold them accountable, that's my job and we'll do that. What do you think made you win big over other candidates in the first election of 2018? And how about this time? What's your advantage? I think, I think to be fair, I was the right candidate for this moment. Yes, this um, moment. I think in 2018, people were very concerned about yeah. Donald Trump, about his approach to immigrants, mm -hmm. about his attack on immigrants, uh, yes. and working people, um, people who are struggling in this country. And, and I think it's because of my experience as the son of immigrants, mm -hmm. the son of small business people um, who struggled and worked extraordinarily hard. They still struggle you know, my yeah. parents. And um, I think people saw that I understood and understand um, how hard it can be yeah. and how much pressure there is on all of us. And that not only did I give voice to, to people who struggle mm -hmm. um, and represent uh, people who are just trying to do the best they can for their families, including many immigrants, I think, I think people understood that I would fight for them and fight hard for them. I think four years later, people may be a little surprised about how hard I fight mm -hmm. for them and, and how much we fight every single day on all of these big issues. It's hard to think of a single issue that we're not engaged on yeah. and that we're not fighting hard in. Um, I think they're surprised that we can do so much in this office, but we can. Yes, I, I follow your Twitter and there are many things you are in, engaged of. Like you speak on every um, you know, points and opinions on yeah. every issue. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of like Donald Trump, you know, like <laughs> engaging every issue. Well, uh, I don't like being compared to Donald Trump, but, but <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I think this has, be, this has become an office that uh, addresses issues, not just local issues, but the ways in which national issues affect mm -hmm, yeah. us here in Connecticut. Yes. So my questions are all done. And as a tradition for our program, you can send a video message uh, to this camera oh. to, your, so to the audience of this program. Okay. So I'll just say, Tang Wei Ling. How's that? How's my Chinese? Pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> I can't do it in Cantonese though, so I'm sorry. My father would would not be happy that I can only do this in Mandarin. You know, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm very proud um, of my heritage. I'm really proud to be a Chinese American. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of um, what my family's been able to accomplish for me and my sisters. And, and I'm grateful because I think that this doesn't happen anywhere else. It only happens here in Connecticut. And, and in this country, in America.